Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Rob, and we're very excited to have Isaac from GoPro here today to talk about their GoPro Plus application. Isaac, thanks for coming. Yeah, happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about GoPro. I mean, most of us are familiar, but tell us what we're going to talk about, and uh, yeah, let's get into it. GoPro makes cameras. They make awesome cameras. And last year, we're kind of embarking into this software space with our GoPro Plus platform. So it's a cloud platform where users can upload media to the cloud. They can do edits. They can share all sorts of fun stuff. Let's get right to the architecture. Where do your customers actually start? Like when I bring my GoPro home, I've got all my videos from the day. What happens? So it actually starts when you come home and plug your camera in. So the camera has Wi-Fi built in. So if you're connected to your home network, all you have to do is connect your Hero 5 camera to power, and it's automatically uploading to the cloud. Awesome. So customers are just charging their cameras, and their videos are coming up. Yeah, you can like throw it in, take a nap. Your videos will be in the cloud when you wake up. Fantastic. Yeah. So everything's in S3? Yeah, we store all the videos in S3, and we're using uh, Elastic Transcoder over here to do the transcoding of the video, so we have different resolutions that are stored in S3. Right. How do your customers actually interact with their, with their media? There's a couple different ways. So we have uh, apps on desktop. We have apps on mobile. That's our quick app. And we also have web applications. So any of those three mediums, you can interact with your, your GoPro media. OK. And how does that come in as far as the system we see up here? If I want to go in and start editing a video, where does it happen? Uh, so it actually happens uh, with a combination of our backend services that are in ECS and SQS. So all of the jobs are put into SQS, and they're picked up by containers that are running in EC2 over here. So we have containers that are pulling SQS queues, and then they're picking up jobs in a JSON-based format, and then returning the results to the user or to a different worker. OK, so all your customer requests for everything is first point of landing is SQS, and then the ECS cluster itself is actually picking up off that queue and, and divvying up all the duties. Exactly. Cool. How do you handle uh, the management of your ECS cluster? What do you do for scaling upon customer load or anything like that? Yeah, so we have all of our clusters in an auto scaling group. Yep. So they can scale horizontally with instances. So in the case where we need to expand more compute, we can do that on the fly. We also have auto scaling uh, at the ECS level with our tasks. So, so the services themselves. Exactly. Right. So we have tasks running in here in containers. And they actually scale up or down based on the size of the queue. So more messages in the queue, oh. more work, more containers respond. Fantastic. And I, I noticed that, that Lambda is also off to the side here. It, how does that interact with the actual ECS cluster? Lambda has just one function in this uh, architecture, but it's really important. So in the case where we're scaling in, so let's say load goes down, we're potentially killing off an instance in our cluster. And at that point, an event is generated in CloudWatch. That's happening over here through lifecycle hooks. And it's calling the Lambda function to gracefully take that instance out of the cluster. So we start putting it into a state of draining, which means no more containers can be placed on that right. instance. Yeah. And the containers that are running are going to gracefully exit. OK, so just a, an additional step of logic driven by lifecycle hooks to make sure that customer impact is minimized. Exactly. Right. Yep. And what about ALB here? Uh, you, know, you mentioned SQS is kind of the front door to the system. What, it, what is ALB doing? So we're actually using ALBs only for the health checking. So in our auto scaling group, we can health check against the ALB status. And what we're doing here is we're checking the health of the actual ECS agent that kind of sits on top of each mm -hmm. of these instances. So if heaven forbid the ECS agent stops working, this instance is automatically going to be taken out of the cluster and replaced with a new one. All right. Well, thank you very much, Isaac. And thank you for sharing your architecture. And thank you for watching. This is my architecture.